Hello everybody, Jordan here with Farm Builder. I was going through a video catalog and realized we've never done a video on the farm store that we have. Um, and so I thought I'd give you the quick tour, talk a little bit about how we built this thing and maybe some of uh, what we might do a little bit differently, how we have our setup inside, and maybe you can draw a little inspiration from it for your own place. So flip the camera around here and we'll walk inside and show you the on-farm retail store. Having a successful on-farm store um, does require a few things to be in place. And the very first thing is identification of where your farm is. Now, if you, for most commodity type farms, it really doesn't matter where you are because your customers aren't coming to you. But if you're doing retail, a farm sign is very essential. So we're right out here on our road. This is Swover Creek Road, just a sleepy little country road. It actually is called the Back Road 81 right here though, because people fly down here. And we have a farm sign right here, big, probably eight feet by five feet, identifying who we are, this is where it is. People still call us and can't find us literally sitting on the road, but we've got to start here. You pull in, having convenient parking is another feature. So we're kind of walking up the drive towards our store. Normally the truck and trailer would be somewhere else, but it's here. And this was not here when, uh, when we first came to this place and got started. This, oh, cat found himself a little mouse. All right, this building was actually just a pole shed and there was grass all the way up to, you know, right up in here where that little concrete thing is. So this parking lot is something that we built and that's quite a few truckloads of gravel because we were essentially filling in the, the little valley there. But having some convenient parking for your customers is a big step. And so there's enough for about four cars here, maybe six if they pull in. Um, and that's enough for what our, you know, average you know, amount of people that would be here at any given time. And there's very proud Kitty going about his duties. <laughs> um, so the building here, when we first came to the farm, was just the pole shed. Um, you can see a pole there to the right of the freezer with the old white uh, metal there. Um, this is a new facade that we put on the front of the building. Had a dirt floor full of junk, had some old trailers parked into it. And we began the process of incrementally um, finishing it out and developing the building. So if you have a building already in a particular spot, usually you don't need any further permitting to build a store. Um, we did end up having to get an ag permit to finish this out, which we are not subject to code as an ag building, but we still had to pull an ag permit. So depending on what your locality is, of course, is going to heavily weigh in the, uh, the zoning and the building codes that you have to um, abide by. But for us, the first thing that we did was poured the concrete pad for the freezer unit here and the store. And that was kind of all we did for that year. I think we put the uh, freezer up and I'll walk through there and, and give you guys a tour, but that's a 10 by 20 foot uh, foster refrigeration freezer unit. They're out of New York. We've worked with them on a couple different units and they are good guys. I would highly recommend them. This other pad that you see over here, that is part of our processing area, which goes around the back of the building. And that was done much later on. Um, that stayed a dirt floor for some time. And we had to dig about three feet of dirt out when we finally put the pad in. So poured the two pads, dropped the freezer in, and then we began the process of constructing the store. And so, you know, none of this front was here. This was just an open shed. Um, and so we built all this out with lumber that we milled from the farm and uh, it's aged pretty well. This is probably, I'm going to say six, seven years old, uh, maybe six years old at this point. The front here, having um, a sign we found is very helpful. You know, we have everything listed on Google and Facebook as well, but having a very clear sign of, hey, these are our hours. We are closed. But if someone pulls in, we will come out and help them. But we like to have signs here for those people who pull in when we're not here. 
All right, come up here a little bit further. We have our banjo playing dog. This is one of our custom customers made this for us, so it's kind of cool. And let's go on in. Okay, so not a very big area here, but it is sufficient for what we do. This is, um, I would say, 24 by 16, I believe. Maybe a little bit bigger, might be 26 by 18. And, you know, this was just a bare pole shed. So everything that you see in here, we framed in, um, you know, and wired everything. Um, put in the windows, obviously the refrigeration and freezer units, and the ceiling up here with the drop lights, all this other stuff. This is actually a fake uh, drop ceiling here. It has 12 inches of insulation above it, and it helps keep the store cool during the summer and warm in the winter. And our goal in uh, everything we've done here is at some point we will tear down the old shed that's around the outside and uh, build a new building over everything that we've got going on and this interior is essentially independent of the outside so we can lift the old building off and this will remain undisturbed so we're looking here towards the front and we'll actually look at some of the products here so we have our uh, beef and poultry freezer right here so we have you know shelves and racks here of the different kind of cuts um, having Prices clearly labeled is a good thing to have. Um, you know, any particular little notifications you need to have. So like right here, we're sold out of whole chickens right now. Not a bad problem to have. Um, this is our pork freezer over here. So it's got all of our different cuts of pork, sausage, um, hot dogs, bratwurst. Very popular. This is our most popular door right here. Different cuts of pork value added stuff that we can do through our certified kitchen. Um, so we have broth, uh, rendered fat, uh, meatballs, soup, pulled meats, some other stuff. And so having this all in a very professional and attractive and well-lit display is a key feature. Because remember when customers are coming into your store, they are looking for a welcoming experience, a clean experience. They are judging you and your farm based off of what they see. So you want to present your store, um, you know, it, understanding that it is representing who you are. Um, let's see some other stuff here, you know, just a little blackboard of what's going on around the farm, some farm tours and so on. Um, over on this side, we have our fridge which has eggs and cheese and other stuff in it. Now we also use this space for order fulfillment. So on days that we're closed is when we are loading our uh, buying clubs and deliveries to retailers up. And so that's some of this stuff you see over here, um, shipping coolers, tables that were being used today for filling orders. And then kind of over here is the command center. So we have a certified scale here, which in most states is gonna be a requirement. Obviously a computer for ringing up orders, some extra little stuff here. You know, so you can make that up sale at the register of some soap. And these are using um, fats from our beef and our hogs. Um, another big seller for us this year that we've started doing are these uh, go sticks or you know basically slim gyms. And we have those in pork and beef. Um, a little selection of our t-shirts here, some other boards, you know, with, with other things that we have and so on. You, know, you kind of see the shelf behind here. The, the difficulty is getting a customer through your door. And once they are through your door, having as many uh, things, you know, diverse things that support and correspond with who you are and your brand the the better um the you know the, the higher your revenue per customer will be no one wants to buy few people want to buy 300 dollars of just ground beef but they'll spend 300 bucks if they can get some pork some soup some chicken some beef some eggs some snack sticks and so on uh let's see a few other things might interest you guys here so we've got one of these patio heaters here we use that in the winter to keep it warm this is our vacuum sealer that we use for poultry when that starts. Random junk laying around. You got that corner in every store. Uh, the bookshelf. 
So some of the stuff that uh, that I read, this is just one shelf, so you can kind of get an idea of the <clears throat> angle I take in my reading material. Um, tried to go with a rustic kind of look. That's what we like. So this is some cedar trees. You know, we cut and peeled and then saw milled them in half and kind of using them to give that, uh, you know, look like they're holding up the beams that are holding the ceiling. Same tree, split in half for both sides. And, you know, we're building this around the existing pole shed. So we have to kind of adapt to what was here and it's all out of square and stuff like that. But that's what you get when you work with older buildings and retrofit them. So I'll back into this corner here and you can get an idea of what we have here. So it doesn't need to be an elaborate space to get started. We literally started selling uh, 10 years ago out of the back of that enclosed trailer you saw in the parking lot. And you know, here we are a decade later having something that's a little bit more of a respectable farm store, but don't feel pressured right away to you know, have that perfect presentation. Just go ahead and start and then let it grow from there. Uh, LED track lights put in a couple years ago and they work really well for giving a nice bright appearance. Try to stay away from having your store look like a dark hole in the wall. Um, you know, having a bright and welcoming environment is a very important thing. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that little video tour of the place. Um, a couple other questions that we get is how much did it cost to build this facility? We're probably about 25000 into everything that we've done here, which is, you know, the pad, the uh, freezer and cooler units, the finishing, the interior, the labor, the electrical, you know, everything. Probably would have been cheaper in the long run to just demo the old building and start from scratch. But we didn't have that kind of money when we were starting. So it's doing it a piece at a time, piece at a time as cash flow allows and, uh, you know, keeping debt lower and so on. Uh, but this is some of the most expensive space that we have on, on the farm. But this is our first line where we interact with our customers, where we fulfill our orders. This is a very critical piece of real estate to our success as a direct to retail farm. Obviously, if you are not farming and selling products to the public. You don't need to worry about such a thing. But if you are, having this space is a critical element. So we'll go next and show you the freezer, talk a little bit about our inventory in there, how we manage it, and then we'll wrap this puppy up. All right, so we're gonna go in the freezer here. So this is our 10 by 20 walk-in freezer. It has a pallet door facing on the outside around that wall. Um, that's where we bring product in and out. And this is our man door, which allows us to bring product into the store. We've had this unit for, I'm going to say eight years now, seven, eight years, been going strong. First thing we'll look at here, this is a little map of where, where everything is in the freezer. And so this kind of corresponds with a sheet that Laura has, and I really should be letting her give this part of the tour because this is her domain, but, um, she's busy with something else tonight. So you get me giving the, uh, the bee tour um, and you know this is a dry erase so they can change what's on here at any given time hit the light now this does not have a latch on this door so you can just pull it open and we'll see how the uh the audio is in here but we'll step in Woo! that is cold all right so what you're looking at here is we've got two sets of shelves going down either side and then a row of palletized product down the middle and this is all organized in a way that corresponds to the, uh, the map on the door and the sheets that they are using. So kind of looking from here, there's probably $100,000 worth of product in here at any given time. So a lot of product, but I'll step back outside because I'm starting to shiver and I'll explain why we carry the amount that we do in inventory. It has two condenser units here. And it's quite cold. <laughs> okay, I think I'm good now. That was pretty cold. Um, all right, so inventory. And um, this is gonna be different for everyone, so by no means is this the, uh, the gospel truth, but this is what works for us. Uh, 
one of the things we noticed when we were beginning um, was that a lot of farms are out of a lot of different things pretty much continually. It's not the same thing every time, but it's they're, they're going to be out of ground beef, you know, six times a year, they'll be out of pork chops, um, you know, another part of the year, they'll be out of whatever. Their inventory is always suffering. So one of the ways that we wanted to set ourselves apart from the competition was we were, we determined that we never wanted to be out of a product. We always wanted to have a lot sitting in inventory so we could capture those customers who are looking for a specific thing and say their, their farm didn't have it and they're calling around looking for it. Um, you know, they'd call us up and say, hey, I need 60 pounds of ground beef or 60 pounds of pork chops. Do you have it? And yes, we would have it. And guess what? We have captured that customer and more than likely they're going to stay with us. So that was one motivation. Another reason that I'll probably do a whole other video about to talk about sometime is um, the efficiency of doing animals in bigger groups and having more of a pulse flow to your inventory instead of a continual trickle. And that is much better for efficiencies, uh, transportation logistics, and so on. So for instance, instead of taking two pigs in every week, we take in 20 every two months kind of thing. Full trailer loads is one of our mantras. Full trailers going down to the processor, full trailer loads of product coming back. So that entails having needing capacity for a lot of inventory. And so that's the, the uh, uh, tactic that we have used for 10 years now that has proven out pretty well. Now, that does mean at any particular time, we have a lot of equity tied up in the freezer. You know, what you guys saw in the walk-in here, that's not even half of what we have. Um, we have more stuff sitting in a cold storage facility about uh, 50 minutes away that we can recall and bring back, you know, as needed, or we can take product down there. So when we get into butchering chickens, for instance, we will be freezing them in our freezer, palletizing them, and sending them down to cold storage. So we are producing um, you know, 12 months worth of inventory in five to six months worth of production. So we're gonna be holding a lot of chicken over the winter, but especially with a cold storage facility, the cost of storing that meat for a period of time is actually very low on a, on a per pound basis so we keep a very fat inventory one it gives us efficiency in our production models that we can do bigger groups of animals and have this pulse effect on our production instead of trickling in and also it gives us a very deep uh you know a deep bench so to speak for when that customer calls and they say hey do you have a quantity of something we have it so for instance we had a wholesale customer um, call us up a couple months ago they wanted 400 pounds of chicken breast not many direct to retail farms are gonna have that you know what we had it and we made the sale the same wholesaler or the same retailer called us back uh, at another time they wanted um, I think it was either three or five hundred whole birds we had those in inventory boom we make the sale and so that it's a way to increase revenue from these customers who are looking for that bigger purchase infrequently but if that's part of what we already have and part of our strategy that we are employing with our inventory we can accommodate those and make those additional sales and those checks five ten thousand dollar checks are really nice for your cash flow so that's a little bit on our inventory and how we manage that as far as you know first in first out uh laura who this is this is her kingdom, this is not mine. If it has hooves, it's mine. Once it loses its hooves, it's hers. And she could give a far better uh, detailing on how her system works, but she has a whole system of Excel sheets, Google Drive stuff <coughs> that she's using to manage what's in cold storage, what's back here. And at any given time, she can, you know, within a few pounds, tell us how much uh, we have of any particular thing. Um, so, I hope that gives you kind of an overview of what we're doing here, what the farm store looks like, the amount of inventory that we're holding, how we manage the inventory. These are things that you know take years to develop. This is not something that we just stepped into and had perfect overnight. 
it takes a while to figure these systems out and to know what works when to balance you know when to push stuff out when to hold more inventory in and so on um, by no means think you have to figure it all out right away if you have questions feel free to drop them down below on the video i will get to them thank you for watching and supporting the uh the channel we really do appreciate that feel free to share this that really helps share it in facebook groups with friends whoever and until next time till we make another video together you all stay safe out on your farms and remember to get after it